All right, so you might recognize the term virtual reality, at least from video games. Well, that's a taste of what we're looking at right now, right? This is virtual simulation at the University of Georgia. VR goggles are worn around the eyes and have these screens inside that change as you move around, right? And this creates an illusion that you are immersed in another world. And so VR, as uh, we understand it, at least in mm -hmm. this context, stands for virtual reality, and it's being used to help simulate the dangers, in this case, of storm surge. Researchers from the University of Georgia, in conjunction with the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, they're hoping that this helps folks living along the coasts to prepare. This morning, we're joined by the professor from the University of Georgia, Dr. Grace Ahn. Um, Dr. Ahn, thank you for joining us. Uh, you're also the director for Advanced Computer Human Ecosystems. So these VR headsets, um, we own a pair. I don't know if I've told oh, you that. Oh, do you? No, I yeah, didn't. We own a pair, um, Dr. Ahn. <laughs> so I'm hoping that maybe this can be something we can download. Describe and, and tell us about the inspiration behind this. Yeah, so this uh, began as a small internally funded project at University of Georgia, and the idea was trying to get people to understand uh, what it would feel like to experience a hurricane-induced flooding in their own home. I think uh, it's, it's pretty typical that people tend to feel very safe psychologically in their own home, and uh, it's really difficult to know exactly what it's going to be like when your home is flooded. And virtual reality provides a uh, really realistic platform for people to see, hear, and feel what it um, would be like to experience such an event. And then um, part two is designed to help you prepare for evacuation. So it takes you through a training module to, to sort of uh, get you to practice the, pra the, the typical, the step-by-step the -step, um, procedures of getting from your home to a shelter. One of the toughest things I think that we have, at least here as meteorologists, is making sure that the messaging, the warnings are properly understood and getting out wow. there. And I think it's so hard for people to imagine the unimaginable, especially when it comes to flooding. Were there certain things that you focused on to ensure that this was an accurate experience? Were there other things um, that you were able to include in it to deliver these messages? Yeah, so this was a really big interdisciplinary project that involved several institutions. And so NOAA was definitely involved with not just the funding, but also a lot of the logistics and the um, expertise that involves uh, what happens during a southeastern um, area uh, when a hurricane hits and, and the subdivisions or uh, individual homes are getting flooded. Uh, we also worked really closely with Clemson University um, as well as the Georgia Sea Grant and the South Carolina Sea Grant to make sure that the expertise from people who are on the ground and very close to the coastal communities are able to provide feedback so that we are delivering, delivering a very customized experience. When it comes to virtual reality, it's obviously I would still call it new technology. Maybe mm -hmm. it's because, you know, we're all getting older, Dr. On, um, and it just feels new. Uh, but it, it actually, the headset for people who have used it, it is a unique experience, and it's actually kind of legit. Mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering if there's been feedback with this. How, how have participants responded? Have there been um, surprising responses that you've heard? Yeah, we've even had meteorologists uh, come in to uh, experience the hurricane um, world uh, we call it, we've labeled it uh, weather the storm. And so we've had people come in to experience it in the laboratory. And even those with real life experiences and extensive experiences reporting on hurricanes have commented that it feels very realistic. And in, in your mind, the back of your mind, you understand that this is not real, but once we're able to envelope you with different layers of digital cues, uh, your brain starts to feel as if it could be potentially real. It calls back on a lot of the memories that you may have had um, personally going through the hurricanes. And so although you may seem, uh, you're, you may initially think that this is um, uh, virtual and just digital, uh, people have responded to it as if it, it were the real thing. Yeah, I mean, in the video we're looking at here, it's dark. I'm sure water is rising. I don't know. I see a flashlight. But it does feel like you're in it. And a lot of professional uh, pilots, astronauts, I mean, all sorts of professions use these simulations to fully get an yeah, idea absolutely. before they're in that situation. Real quickly before you leave, we leave you, accessibility. Now, is this something that we're hoping to get out there to the public if they were to attend maybe some sort of meeting with emergency management? Or how do we get this out there so people can learn from it? Yeah, so if you visit our website, that's www.egavr.com slash weather the storm, 
Uh, the experience is downloadable for anybody who has access to a MetaQuest headset. Um, if you don't have access to it, we are happy to provide uh, a loan program for you. And so if you are interested in uh, practicing or training or educating anybody um, about the dangers of hurricanes and storm surge events, we would be uh, glad to collaborate with you. It's uh, it's important, yeah. an important technology, too, because a lot of times you hear people say, you know, never thought that this would happen. Right. Now you can virtually experience it and, and be prepared accordingly. We appreciate the time this morning, Professor mm -hmm. from the University of Georgia, Dr. Grayson. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right.